February 22nd, 2005. When was that? What was that? <laughs> and I said, when was that? It was a long time ago. Yeah. Less than one month after finishing fifth in the World Poker Open, you defeated Geraldo Borgeras to win the main event of the LA Poker Classic. What were the emotions following your first WPT win? Well, that was sure a long time ago for me. Mm -hmm. so. Felt real good. It was one of the best feelings I ever had. It was a large amount of money, 1.85 million. And, you know, it was like second to coming, like like when I had my baby and everything. Like the the happiest feeling was when when you have your first baby, I guess. That was the first baby. <laughs> no, when you have my first baby. Um, Paul was in '04, right. but that was like the happiest feeling. Then after that was uh, this was like the greatest feeling, and it was good timing too. That money, you know, and mm -hmm. just getting started with a family and stuff like that. So it was cool. And at the time, you were really young. Right, when you won that. So most of the time we know youth and money, they don't go well together. You were only 24, you had over $2 million in two months. How did you handle becoming an instant millionaire? Well, the first thing I've done was bought uh, that RV everybody knows about, and I right. kept it, what, six, seven months, not too long, and I sold it. And I lost you know, a few bucks on that. And you know, you're stupid when you, and you win a lot of money. You've never seen that much, much money once. It, it was always a grind here to pick up a few thousand here, a few thousand. But you, when you get a big chunk of money like that, you just start losing. You're going crazy happy, you know, you know, spending it, just, mm. you know, whatever you do, partying, uh, mm. just, just, going to, just going to malls, just giving people money, letting, putting people in tournaments, putting this. So, I mean, you learn your lesson. After you win your first tournament, after you spend all the money, whatever you do with it, you learn a lesson for the next, you know, for the next time you come when you win it, then you're a lot smarter with, you know what to do with it, and you don't want to go all crazy and just, you know, take your time, and sometimes you got you have tight pockets. Right, so that first two million went pretty fast, didn't it? Uh, pretty <laughs> fast, you know, bought, I bought a few houses and stuff like that, and yeah, it, it went pretty fast, faster than I thought, it, may, it, may, it took a year or so. Right, <laughs> it's not very long for two million, but you grew up in South Florida, yeah. and you're one of four brothers, what kind of childhood did you guys have? Well, all my brothers and I, Robert, Eric, and Daniel, were always, always close. My family was always close together. All we do is gamble with each other, you know, talk to each other about poker hands, you know, mm -hmm. just go out with each other, movies, just hang out, you know, race car, anything. We just done that. We done everything together. And our family was really, really close, and I'm still close with my mother and father. And you know, we have a you know, great family, and now, now I have kids and stuff like that. So you know, we, but we, I moved out there, and they're still over there. So I kind of miss home. I miss Miami, but I might. I'm thinking about moving back, but I'm not sure yet. Really? You just yeah. moved to Vegas, didn't you? I'm three years ago, but I'm always in Vegas. But you know, there's no no place like home. I'm still thinking about it. You know, it's tough when your family's in Miami and you're here, and, and you know, it's really tough on yourself. And and forget about the poker. You think your family comes first, and then this is you know step number two. Right. I read that around the time you were 13. Rob was, that's when he introduced you to poker, right? Uh, I wouldn't say Rob introduced me, but we, um, Rob and I always talked about poker. I mean, he started dealing in Danny Ahilai, who's a car dealer around 13, four, four, 15 years old, I think he was. Mm -hmm. My mother and Rob went together and uh, they just started dealing. They'd like, you know, they lo loved the gambling business, they loved playing cards. And then I started playing, uh, my parents, we, I went to the Indian casinos, I went to boats, we met Rob and I went on boats. We talked, we analyzed and talked about hands all, every, all the time. And we just learned from each other, and that's how we both became great. And Eric plays a lot, and so is Donnie. I didn't realize your mom played. Oh, my mom plays more than we do. Really? She plays every single day. What is she, online? online? Yeah, mostly online. <laughs> Tell me about your decision to drop out of college to play. Well, I wasn't much of a school guy. You know, I, I felt like school was a little, it was easy. I was always sleeping through school. I just right. thought it was rough. I remember I had a long, long sessions. I had to drink like five Red Bulls to get to class early morning, <laughs> and I just had, you know, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. And it was a community college, and I just felt like, you know, I couldn't start these early morning classes, even late nights. I just wanted to play poker all the time. And I thought there, I never seen people, you know, as many people successful in college. In poker, I see like, you, you see, uh, you, you, you just see more, there's more money in poker than if you go to college and waste a lot of time. Then after college, some people don't even do anything. They just right. sit home and just, yeah, I mean, you have your education, I mean, that's what, you, that, you, know, you benefit from that, but. What else is there? And there's not. You're not. Some of those guys are not as successful as poker players. Right. Were you already a winning player then? I was winning since day one, since I was 15. Wow. So I was playing seven card stud mostly. I don't know if this is true, but I heard early on in your career you prim primarily played online poker. Is that true? I always played online poker since the start. I remember when Planet Poker was around, and I was always playing Paradise Poker, and and then I started playing. I remember I like one of the first players to start up on Poker Stars and. 
and all when all these sites party poker and that's all you know, you know the grinder to get that name so quick you gotta be one of the first ones because well I always want somebody wants a name like that mm. but the only the only place <laughs> i never got uh that name was actually it was pretty funny where was my sponsors from previous it was absolute poker when you somebody had the, somebody had the grinder <laughs> right, right they should have taken it away and gave it to you yeah <laughs> <laughs> how did you make that transition to play live since you were so used to online poker well uh, no, it's, I was always playing live and online because I was on the casino ships and right. we were playing a lot of limit poker and always playing live amongst other players and then I was playing online when I got home late nights after the cruise ship at one or two in the morning. Right. So the name Grinder just stuck from having that name online, the first guy to it, have the Grinder. Now it got stuck and now my kids call me Grinder so really? it stuck to me for, for the rest <laughs> of me. Yeah. All right, let's, let's fast forward to 2006. 11 final tables, 2.3 million in tourney winnings. And an OEPT title, all which were good enough to win the Player of the Year award. You jumped out with a pretty far lead at first, but then it came back. And it was pretty close. Tell me about that experience. Well, it was, you know, you know how it is. I mean, you gotta if you if you want to go on with you know be successful or you know achieve your goal, you gotta you know go with it and go for it. And uh, I kind of like slowed down a little bit. You know, sometimes you you have your good months and you just have your bad months where. Like what's going on? How come I can't win anymore? Um, mm -hmm. What am I doing wrong? And you want to go back to your past months. Like how did I play that I won these tournaments? Let me, let me try the same style. But sometimes mm -hmm. you forget that style. Right. But uh, then, I, then I figured my way. I, I held on to lead, thank God, and I ended up winning 2006 player of the year. But 2007 was a little rough for me. I'm, I think I finished like maybe hundredth in card player this year. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. But that's okay. You have 2008. Come yeah. Up. Why do you think you haven't won a World Series bracelet yet? Truthfully, I don't know. I had the most caches in 2005, I think, in really? the World Series. I just can't get to the final table. I don't know. Maybe I have to learn from Rob. Uh, <laughs> I'll teach him how to win WPT. i teach him how to win WSOP. Right. I, just, I, just, I haven't made even a final table yet in the World Series. I, it's nothing. I don't, I just cash. I, just, I don't know what it is. And maybe the fields are so large and yeah. I just have a bad start. I mean, I got really unlucky a lot of hands. I got deep in a few of them, but I got you know really, really lucky. The best finish I think I ever had was 11th. Mm -hmm. the one Scott Fishman won a few years ago. <laughs> Is and that maybe, four, three, four years ago? Maybe yeah. it's because, you know, like in a lot of those events, you start with like 2,000 chips or 3,000. and. Well, I play the short stack really well. I mean, okay. short and deep stack poker really well. I just that, it's just unfortunate. I just can't get there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. But hopefully, well, one, will, and when I when I get to that final table, it's going to be repeat. I'll just keep getting there. Okay. And if I get there, hopefully I'll, I'll come up with a victory. All right, whenever you go deep in a tournament, it seems you always have this really enthusiastic cheering section. And always the ringleader of that would be Lily. Your wife. So, yeah. how did you two meet? Well, Lily and I met. Actually, it was an Indian casino. About f I would say about March of '04 or something like that. I I was an extra dealer in the Indian casino, Seminole Indian Casino mm -hmm. in Florida. I I just came as an extra, and uh, I just wanted to be more responsible. See if I could work for a little bit instead of playing poker all the time. And I just you know I just met her in the casino, and uh, one time she was in the break room, and uh, we started talking. Actually, the whole story is she saw my friend downstairs, and uh, my friend Ricky. And she said, his phone rang and it said grinder and she's like, What's grinder? So grinder called you. She's like, Oh yeah, didn't you know he works here? Mm -hmm. And she's like, Oh really? And then um she found out who I was and she saw me in the break room and she's like, uh, so I heard you play poker and this and like she goes, Why don't we play heads up? And I was like and she took down my number and she called me that same night and that was it. She's so fiery. <laughs> yeah, I love her. Yeah, yeah. All right, you come from a really traditional Jewish family, right? Oh, I do. How important is religion?